Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, this is a new report. It came out a couple of days ago, but it's still fresh, it's still relevant, and it shows that Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who is running for president as a Democrat in a primary challenge to Joe Biden, he's hinting that he may eventually, we don't know if he's dropping out or if he's going to be announcing this after the primaries or over, that he's going to run for president as a third party candidate, which again, it's a long shot bid regardless. He has zero shot in the Democrat primary. He might get some votes from people crossing over. He might get some votes from some boomer Democrats who don't like Biden and are nostalgic for the Kennedy name. But other than that, it's about it. So he's running potentially third party. Some people are saying this is going to impact Republicans positively because he's a Democrat and running third party would take votes from Biden. However, there's other people that say, well... You have to look at who's supporting him and who's propping him up. It's usually these independent voters who tend to be somewhat anti-establishment, and they typically like Donald Trump, and he has a higher favorable rating from Republicans than he has from Democrats to the point where people are saying maybe he'll take votes away from Donald Trump. And these are two arguments that are to some extent logical, but I think we really have to delve into how this will really affect the race. First of all, I don't believe it's going to affect it a whole lot either way. I think third parties as a whole are going to hurt Joe Biden. And that is true because you look at 2020 overall, the third party vote share was fairly low. And where you did see a third party share that was noticeable, like in the state of, we could pull this up here in Georgia, that libertarian margin likely took more away from Trump than it took away from Biden. And there was no Green Party candidate on the ballot, partially because there wasn't a strong effort behind one, unlike 2016. And yes, you had Democrat lawsuits trying to get them off the ballot. This time, they've got their star candidate in Cornell West to the point where he'll probably, in a state like Georgia, he might take one to two percent of the vote there and that vote's going to largely be taken away from somebody like biden and it will help donald trump potentially cross the finish line in the state of georgia and you look back in 2016 third parties they can make minnesota competitive they can make new hampshire competitive they can make states like the state of maine competitive this was within three points back in 2016 2020 not so much. Partially, I think the third parties played some role. Didn't play the entire role. This doesn't fully explain everything. Uh, there's a lot of factors at play, but still, it is one of those things. And the higher third party vote share overall, it likely will help Donald Trump. So we could say, well, the favorability rating for RFK Jr. I agree. And when I tweeted this out, I said it may hurt Trump more. Looking into it a little bit more, I tend to believe that it's a wash Potentially, it could even hurt Biden because look at RFK Jr.'s favorability among Democrats. It's lower, but those Republican primary voters that tend to, if they like RFK Jr., are they going to vote for him over Trump when he has zero shot at victory and probably is only going to poll at like, you know, maybe three or four percent? That might even drop from here on out. Typically, third party candidates poll higher initially, and then their support fizzles out. I think that he might serve the role of like the Gary Johnson. I know there was the debate, does Gary Johnson hurt uh, Trump or Hillary more? At the time, we thought potentially Trump, but maybe not given the fact that a lot of those Gary Johnson voters, some of them did go for Joe Brandon in 2020 to the point where maybe it didn't. So overall, I think it just takes like one Trump tweet slash truth social post to kind of attack RFK Jr. and his favorability rating is going to decrease. Now, I will say if there was an establishment Republican leading the Republican ticket or an establishment friendly Republican, I would say even somebody like Ron DeSantis, he's not going to get the nomination. But if he got the nomination, I do believe 
that RFK Jr.'s presence would hurt him because a lot of those like Trump voters who might be only Trumpers or disaffected, they probably would vote for somebody like RFK Jr. But a lot of the DeSantis people, they're not really all that big of a fan of him. Maybe they do tend to hypothetically like the COVID stuff. But even then, I feel like a lot of that is just kind of LARPing from that wing and trying to just hoodwink some of Trump's more anti-establishment based are trying to do the conservative equivalent of, oh, Democrats are the real racists. And that doesn't work. It doesn't help you gain black voters in meaningful numbers to uh, broadcast that tagline as a campaign strategy. And it's really not working for the DeSantis campaign either. And it's also important to understand that RFK Jr. holds views that are very liberal on guns, on abortion, the environmental stuff. He uh, makes Biden look center-right on the environmental issues to the point where I think he has some intriguing policy positions. I think as foreign policy, it's like the old school uh, Democrats where they tended to be a little bit more uh, I wouldn't necessarily say dovish, but non-interventionist compared to the Republicans at the time, which were very hawkish. So you're looking at the big picture here. I think that RFK Jr. overall running is probably not going to negatively impact Republicans in a meaningful sense, in a meaningful sense. And even if somehow he did, I think the other third parties and the no labels, we haven't talked about them. They're signing up registrations like crazy in the state of Arizona. They've already got, you know, over a dozen thousand signups, I think within like their first week of trying or something like that, to the point where, yeah, those would definitely impact because you have a lot of voters, they don't like either candidate. And maybe they really are one of those independents who tends to really not like Trump, but they don't like Biden. Well, maybe they'll vote for a Joe Manchin, Larry Hogan ticket and running it for the no labels. I think that overall the third parties and the fact that they're rising, I think they do help Trump. I think they'll be able to cope and say, well, we're taking from both sides equally. And maybe they are taking from both sides, but it's not equal. In my opinion, it's not. And I think people are really going to start to notice, maybe even after it's too late, that these third parties and the presence of them overall, it's going to help Donald Trump. Now, it's also possible that Trump attacking RFK Jr., if it does come to that or it does happen, would possibly reverse the decline. Because we talk about politics there are 13 months plus until election day 2024. And in the past like six months, RFK Jr. had a sizable favorable rating among Democrat primary voters. And now the decline has been put in place and now he's underwater. As for Republicans, they had a favorable rating and it's really stood the same. If anything, it's gone up a little bit. But like I said, that could instantly change. It could change in an instant. And we know how that works. Even a week in politics is like a year in many cases to the point where, yeah, anything can obviously happen. It's too early to tell, but those favorable ratings like being a snapshot in time are not entirely indicative of what is going to happen 13 months from now. Either way, the bottom line remains the same. Donald Trump is the favorite for 2024. 2020, was he exactly perceived as the favorite? I think a lot of people saw it as 50-50, and we expected there to be a polling error, and there was. Was it technically enough? Well, that's another story. But still, what I will say for 2024 is Trump leads the popular vote polls, even though some of the state polls were off in 2022, the national popular vote polls were actually accurate. And part of the reason why I think that some of the state polls were wrong is because they expected presidential level white working class turnout. And we didn't exactly see that happen. So the wave didn't exactly come at the rate that it should have. But either way, looking past it, 2024, we can't look at 2022 and say, hey, we're going to let that loss fully dictate our, where we stand. Now, we can learn from it. I think we can. We can learn from the mechanics of it. We should. Um, we should understand that turnout is really all that matters, given the fact that people who didn't even campaign were winning and winning out of nowhere. And we need to revisit our turnout strategy 
and how we view the election system and beat the Dems at their own game, which we're doing more now than we were. So there is hope on that front. But either way, Trump is still favored even by the metrics that said he was a strong non-favorite in 2016 and in 2020 to the point where it's like, yeah, we'll definitely see what happens. We can't take victory for granted. But the third parties definitely should help Donald Trump overall, even potentially RFK Jr., despite Republicans currently at this snapshot in time viewing him more favorably. And maybe they're going to view him even more favorably because they're like, oh, look at this guy. You know, he's running to take votes away from Joe Biden. And maybe we're overstating the fact of that, or some people will, but it doesn't matter because I think at the end of the day, he takes slightly more votes away from Biden than Trump. And somebody like the No Labels Party, for example, or the Green Party, they take a lot of votes away, uh, comparatively speaking, from Joe Biden to the point where it's like, yeah, this helps Trump. It's a positive thing. We shouldn't exactly look at it as a negative. But I don't even know if RFK Jr. is going to do this. He teased an announcement. That could mean a lot of things. I saw the video. It didn't say one way or another, but he did hint at it. So we'll see what he decides to do, and we'll go from there. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.